Hello, everyone. Thank you. Uh, my name is Matt Martin. Uh, this is my chef here, Vicki Connell. Um, we're from Southern Hampshire University. And a couple of weeks ago, I was in her office, and we were chatting. And she had told me that there was this event coming up where um, people wanted a molecular gastronomy sort of demonstration, something that was a little bit innovative that incorporated science and food. Um, when we uh, came up with our idea, we were sitting thinking that this was going to be um, something where you guys would get a box lunch. So we started thinking of box lunches. So what's usually in a box lunch? You get like a sandwich, you get an apple, you get a bag of chips, and you get cookies and you get milk. So we were thinking like, oh, cookies and milk, like that's fun. How can we sort of take that idea and change it around a little bit? So today, uh, we're going to give you milk and cookies, but you're, you're going to have frozen milk that we're going to freeze on the anti-griddle. We've taken like a panna cotta mixture. So panna cotta is basically scalded cream with uh, sugar and vanilla bean that you add gelatin to. And then you uh, typically freeze it for, I mean, I'm sorry, you chill it for like six hours. And then it comes out to the panna cotta jello-like consistency. So we're going to be able to change that consistency, sort of change that texture in only about a minute and a half. So we're cutting down on a lot of time, and we're going to be bringing something to you that's very familiar. So there's this buzzword, molecular gastronomy. So what is molecular gastronomy? What does it mean? How did it start? So Irv Tess, who's the forefounding father, basically, of molecular gastronomy, is a French chemist. And he and his friend, Nick Curdy, um, who is an experimental physicist, basically had a commonality. Uh, it's a commonality that we all share, and it's that they loved food. Everybody loves food. Everybody loves to eat. Everybody has that certain smell, that certain experience that brings them back somewhere. Whether it's you know, a hot mold cider on Thanksgiving, the, the turkey on Thanksgiving, or things like that. You know, um, your mother's peanut butter and jelly that she cut the crust off of. There's something for everyone. Um, and for me, it, it's milk and cookies, which is cool. Um, so molecular gastronomy sort of came about because Irv Tess and Nick Curdy were talking to each other, and they were wondering why. Why do things happen? Why, does the, why do these phenomena occur? Um, and they started writing them down. Why does an egg become hard when you boil it? Why does chocolate, when you melt it, you know, get, get its elasticity? Uh, why does... Um, why does mayonnaise help emulsify a vinaigrette? And they wrote down almost 3,000 questions like this. And they started working on them because, because they're both scientists. So they would write up hypotheses, they would write up um, procedures, and they would go about figuring things out. And that was in 1988. And eventually, they started to do lecture series very similar to these, where they would go and explain what it is they found out. They would go and say, um, you know, uh, this happens because of this. Mayonnaise helps emulsify vinaigrettes because of lecithin in the egg yolk that mayonnaise is made with. Uh, lecithin holds, between, holds a stability between a fat and a water molecule. And, and they would explain all of these things. And eventually, um, sadly, Nick Curdy died and Irv Tess continued on. Um, and while they were giving their lecture series, they used to call it molecular and physical gastronomy. And um, Irv actually thought that that was kind of silly, so he dropped physical and he coined it molecular gastronomy. So that's actually the heritage of where the word comes from. And there's been a progression of food and science. Um, and as you can see in front of us, this is an example. So we have the anti-griddle. The anti-griddle is a, is a baby, and it's made by um, PolyScience and Grant Ackett's. They came together, and they have produced this piece of equipment. Um, PolyScience is a science corporation who's been around since 1963. What they do is they keep things at a constant temperature. They make water baths. Um, they make circulators that keep things and hold things. They, they do this for um, chemical purposes, to keep chemicals that would be reactive at certain temperatures um, under the temperature where they would be reactive. Um, they use this for um, medical purposes as well in the plastic industry. There's a lot of real life practical applications, of course, to what PolyScience does. They um, are a part in um, making sure that coolant doesn't overheat in your car and all these things. And they've been around since 1963. So they're, they're, they're dad, you could say. And then mom, uh, he'd kill me if he heard me say this, Grant Ackett's, um, a famous chef from Chicago. Um, a, a very re world-renowned famous chef um, who in 
who was the sous chef at the French Laundry, Thomas Keller's restaurant in, in California for multiple years, um, had worked under a lot of people in Chicago, eventually came up with this idea of being able to freeze things and being able to keep something at a frozen um, state to change textures, to change the consistency of things. And um, he, he thought of this idea while he was at a barbecue with his business partner. They were in their backyard and Grant was taking um, a sheet tray like we have here and he was dipping it in liquid nitrogen. Now liquid nitrogen boils at negative 321 degrees, super cold. So he would take this and he would dip it in the liquid nitrogen, flip it over and then he would freeze sauces on it and then he would garnish dishes with it um, for his friends at a barbecue. It's a pretty sick barbecue to be at. <laughs> but um, so he would do these things and he thought that there's an application to this, like we can use this in our restaurant. But he didn't have the capability of making something this. He doesn't have the background, but poly science does. So they got together and Grant brought to him this idea of keeping something at a certain temperature, extremely cold, for culinary purposes. Now this wasn't poly science's first experiment with food. Um, like I said, they do water circulators. Now I don't know if anybody in here has heard of sous vide cooking or cooking under pressure, but it's basically when you take, um, you can take anything and put it in a vacuum sealed bag and cook it in a water um, temperature controlled bath. And what that does is it, it makes it so that there's basically no error. If you want a medium steak at 110 degrees, I can put it in this bag, put it in a temperature controlled water bath, cook it, and then it'll come out at exactly 110 degrees. And that sort of idea um, you know, is seen here. This right here, we have one square foot of this stainless steel and it holds at a temperature of minus 30 degrees. So what we can do is taking that similar application of cooking something at a constant temperature and instead of cooking, we're super cooling. So we have here that panna cotta mixture that I told you about. What we're gonna do is we're gonna freeze this panna cotta mixture. And while it freezes, um, it's, it's gonna actually get the texture of ice cream. When you eat it in your mouth, you'll be able to bite it, you'll be able to chew it. And when it, re when it reconstitutes into its cream, um, it gives you the verisimilitude of eating a cookie and having really cold milk in your mouth. And that's where, that's where these become something that's really cool. It's taking something that you're very familiar with, but it's giving it to you in a new way. It's showing you, a, it's showing you something different but the same, which is really how molecular gastronomy has become so, such a big part of, of food. It gives you a way of bringing familiarities to people and applying it differently. So things like this, I mean, for me, are completely interesting and I feel like they're the future of where food's coming because everybody's eaten a good meal, but not everybody has had a life-changing experience while eating. And pieces of equipment like this, they can bring that. They can bring that wow factor. And it's very practical and, and it's very easy um, to use too once you've figured it out. So we've got, um, we, have our, we, have? we have our cookies here and we, we have a chocolate cookie that has cracked black pepper in it. And we're going to be sitting out, out front and we'll have our anti-griddle going and you guys can come around and sample what we've been, what we'll be making for you guys today. Thank you very much. <laughs>